Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fuse's channel. Just want to let you guys know what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be running through company updates, industry updates, answering any questions you guys have for us. If you have any, don't be afraid to send them over. And of course, introducing members of the team. So who better to kick us off than Mark Smargan, CEO. Mark, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. So the best way to start these off usually is to kind of paint a picture of your past experience for people. So, so going back to like, you know, you're out of school. What was your entrepreneurial spark? Like, like what activated your, your decision to get into business? Well, actually, I was uh, in business uh, quite early. So I think uh, I got the entrepreneurial spark uh, very, very uh, early on. I think as soon as like, uh, I don't know, it was like fifth grade or something like that, I, I started the like enterprises with friends, but uh, like the, the really big one, you know, except uh, finding excuses not to to to, to go to class. <laughs> uh, I really like the big the big event was when in seventh grade I started the company with my brother when we were fourteen years old. It was twenty three years ago, something like that, um, almost twenty three years ago. And the company still exists, you know, uh, one of the earliest first e-commerce providers in Israel, um, um, here in Tel Aviv. Um, and I always felt like uh, the future, you know, I, I'm a child of the internet. Uh, so uh, definitely uh, Bitcoin uh, sparked my interest. And, and I always believed that, you know, the, in the future, people will not be saying e-commerce. Mm -hmm or commerce it would be like the same thing or online and offline it's not going to be that uh, uh, distinct because mostly it would be online <laughs> yeah, yeah and most of the transactions are e-commerce in the future so uh, so bitcoin for me is just like a step towards that you know in a, the inevitable uh, 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 you know flow like people just don't realize how things are changing you know decade over decade over decade only with that perspective of really starting very early, I can say that, uh, you know, everything people said about Bitcoin, people told me about the internet. People were saying about online shopping. You think it works? You think it can make money? So uh, naturally, when I saw Bitcoin, it felt like, uh, okay, that's amazing. You know, uh, we can flatten a lot of the inefficiencies. We can sell to Americans, for instance, as an Israeli company, I, can, I cannot charge Americans without being based in the U.S., uh, so there's a lot of really fragmentation and problems that I saw Bitcoin fixes. So yeah, in 2013, I bought my first Bitcoin. I just wanted like a one whole Bitcoin, uh, just, you know, to, to, to play with the technology. Uh, and one Bitcoin cost uh, uh, about 100 shekels, $20, something like that, wow. back in the day in 2013. Uh, so yeah, I fell through the rabbit hole, like a few months uh, basically since then until now nine years later i'm still uh, uh, i'm still doing uh, i'm still i'm full time in crypto and uh, and fuse is my fourth company since so yeah. uh, that's like i'm 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 really making a, a short uh, summary at the beginning we we felt bitcoin is amazing that's the uh, that's the future uh, everybody are going to pay with it then we realized and we were like one of the first Broker in Israel, then we realized nobody wants to pay with Bitcoin. You know, we thought with this technology is very powerful. Not only we, but you know, this is just right before the blockchain space started to to grow. Uh, but we called ourselves Bitcoin 2.0, and we built an overlay protocol on top of Bitcoin called Colored Coins, and that's my next company that was uh, called Colu, which was a shortcut for Colored Coins, and that was one of the first blockchain companies in Israel, uh, and uh, it, when Ethereum uh, evolved, when Ethereum started, you know, developing as an idea, we understood that this is, you know, uh, a very good idea, but uh, we needed something to actually implement a product and Bitcoin was the only, only, only way to use uh, a blockchain uh, uh, before Ethereum, uh, uh, before there was a blockchain industry and Ethereum did the unimaginable and created a new blockchain, Bitcoin was really the only game in town. Uh, so uh, Colored Coins and, and, and Colo were, were building that protocol, which basically Ethereum turned obsolete. Let me, let, me, let me grab you for a second there. So there's something, I'm seeing a pattern in a lot of what you do here. When you had mentioned uh, people saw the internet and, and they had naysayers, people saw e-commerce and they had naysayers, people saw Bitcoin, they had naysayers. So I guess 
what what you've had across this time period, I would say, is is vision, right? You've seen what could become of these things and, and like to some degree what's going to happen in the future and you were able to act on it preemptively before other people yeah. caught on. What what gives you that ability? Like like how can people do that? Well, I, th I think uh, saying vision is a bit uh, misleading. I think uh, there's intuition uh, and uh, there's logic. And uh, a lot of times people with people, uh, intuition, logic and reality don't meet. I had the luck that, uh, that my logic was, uh, was sound and my intuition was correct. Uh, it, it doesn't mean that I, I always knew what would be the future and never made mistakes. You know, yeah. that doesn't mean at all. I'm just, uh, uh, I just realized that there's, uh, uh, you know, the, the financial system, the more you know about it, the, the more you're confused. <laughs> there's, <laughs> no, no, there's a lot of things that make you really confused when you're like going down the rabbit hole. The more I learn about blockchain, the more I understand I, I, I don't know everything. Um, but I, I, I do think that... Uh, that uh, I, I know what I observed to, to work and what I observed to be right. And those cycles in crypto, they're, they're repeating. Yeah. Uh, and uh, history repeats itself and patterns evolve. And there's like some things you can already say, there's like force of nature, just the way this technology works, the, the way the psychology works. Uh, and you can anticipate stuff. So that's, that's it. I'm not, I'm not a sightseer or, or a, I don't know, yeah, uh, no, you know, enough. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I just, uh, I just think that uh, every good entrepreneur needs uh, good um, intuition. Yeah, yeah, very well said. Okay, well, here, hopping back into the story. So now, tell me, you, you had worked on these plethora of other companies before you landed on Fuse. Tell me what the spark was for Fuse, as we were, and then how you became CEO, and then what that kind of looks like. Yeah, so first of all, uh, we said uh, in, uh, in 2017, uh, when I was at Colu, uh, we said something super simple, uh, that uh, this technology is a game changer, um, and uh, that we can uh, build like a, a specific model uh, using this technology uh, and really implement a consumer-facing product, really build, you know, a, a consumer-facing uh, implementation that uses those tools uses DeFi. We talked about DeFi long before it was a buzzword. We talked about stable coins. We talked about NFTs. So th those things weren't foreign to us. But those Legos, we wanted to assemble them in a way uh, that in 2017 was premature. The technology was premature. In 2017, we really w weren't able to, to use this technology for a consumer facing product. Uh, it was like only the early days, we didn't know the risks, the, the regulators uh, weren't really familiar with anything, the adoption wasn't there, the education wasn't there, uh, and also there was like a, this false dichotomy between centralized, decentralized, people were too ideological and not enough technological to, to actually think about the technology without, you know, thinking about prices. Yeah. That was 2017. Uh, then uh, uh, fast forward uh, a few years, uh, we said uh, that this is, uh, you know, uh, early, but uh, uh, it's important to be early. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see the future as probably not one blockchain will be like rule, rules the world and holds all the human knowledge. It's not going to be everything sits on Ethereum. Great. You know, this is uh, also uh, a speculation Ethereum maxis and Bitcoin maxis, uh, they visualize uh, a world where all the experimentation and all the knowledge and all the business models, they're basically uh, going to Ethereum, mm -hmm. uh, going to like one blockchain. And the future is clearly not that. The future uh, is uh, like once you move your money onto a blockchain, and that's inevitable because just like very frictionless and, and cheap way to, to manage funds, 24, works 24 7, you can access it without uh, any. A, 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 any regulator, you don't need like approval or a gatekeeper, you don't need to pay a, a rent to somebody, there's not, nobody keeping you there, uh, you can live anytime you want. So the, the whole idea is that people will use this just because there's less friction, you know, uh, path of least resistance, and then uh, you have uh, um, uh, no friction to move from different blockchains, so this is what naturally people will do. So we said we want to build Fuse as a blockchain because we believe that the future is multi-chain and there will be more than one blockchain, there will be blockchains around specific verticals. That's one thing we said. The other thing we said 
is uh, that while Ethereum maxis and Bitcoin maxis think that uh, you know we're living in a pure digital world, in the end we're living in the physical world. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I can't imagine people that uh, only want virtual money. They don't want to spend it in the real world. They mm -hmm. only want it somewhere in the cloud to play on games and shields and warcraft and stuff like that they would never 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 want to take a loan and buy an apartment <laughs> don't, don't, not like anything uh, other than uh, than the real world and uh, um, in the real world uh, ethereum maxis and bitcoin maxis they 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 see as the real world as uh, as completely broken and we need to replace everything but then when you talk to them about things like uh, payments, they say, oh, no, there's PayPal, there's Visa. Why, why is it OK to use Visa and PayPal? Uh, um, and, and why is it so expensive? And why they don't seem like, you know, bothered by, by, by the fact that uh, you, know, you, you, you need those centralized products? That, uh, so really, the, the payment system, the worldwide payment system is broken. Uh, it's not really, uh, there's not no real good business models it's fragmented it's limited to to countries so for instance stripe square played only north america parts of europe yeah. uh, you don't have it anywhere else it's super expensive three percent paypal also you, they charge three percent uh, this cost is very heavy uh, and nobody really wants to pay it but uh, your alternative is cash so basically the only cheap alternative is 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 paper cash uh, something that is not digital can be used for online commerce, can be taxed, can be safeguarded or, or accounted for. It's basically a, a, a way to evade taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 I, and, and, and really, there's a lot of really big problems, especially since, you know, underwriting processes means that without, uh, without uh, some gatekeeper like Visa or without a third party that will physically come to me and, and, and require me to register as American business and, and, and charge me 3%, I can't really accept money from customers, not online and not offline. So, uh, and I'm not, not even talking about third world countries like uh, South America, Africa, Asia, they, they don't use visa, they will never use visa. This is not something that uh, is relevant for those jurisdictions at all. You know, they're not going to buy expensive payment cards and, and card readers and stuff like that. So really looking at uh, a world that, all at once suddenly decides to to move away from paper cash mm -hmm. and what's the alternative stripe there's literally two three four companies in north america that all charge the same fees how is not that not a mafia yeah yeah <laughs> you know? it's an oligarchy at this point right they they kind of rule yeah. over it themselves but um yeah. i think you're right it's interesting yeah. how you mentioned um i wanted to get to that too when you had said when you were talking about um when you, when you guys were getting to the space and you were a little too early. Um, being early is, is one of the most important things, but there is some level of momentum that you have to build up when you're that early, right? You're, you're kind of going after a very centralized space that is ripe for disruption, right? As you had said, there's, there's very few players. The, the kings are kind of on their thrones, but the, the thrones are rickety. And they ain't serving everybody. They're only serving the king's needs. So tell me yeah. what, what that's like now that you're, you're, you're going after this very large, very necessary industry, but one that's ready for disruption. Yeah. So first of all, I think the, that the, everything I said, the, the banking system knows. Uh, the banking system doesn't like Visa. Visa knows that. Hmm. Uh, the banking system uh, is in a conflict of interest with Visa. Uh, the, the banking system uh, can't replace visa with another visa, you know, yeah. we, we, need a, we need a better business model. Think about P2P payments, they, they have zero uh, way to earn, right? If you look at Venmo, which is like social payments in the US, what, what, what is their revenue model? Selling Bitcoins. Uh, if you look at uh, Square Cash, the, the, the most growing, you know, social payments app in, in North America, What's their business model? Selling Bitcoin. Uh, even Robinhood, you know, their business model is, is, is to some extent selling Bitcoin uh, because business models uh, in the financial system are not that good when you, when you try to really give a, a product that is free and, and you're don't, not trying to make money from user data. Uh, that's, that's when it becomes a big problem and, and, and I think those problems are not solved especially since this, uh, this system incurs heavy, heavy fees for their operators. 
because the system is from the 60s. Visa is a, 60, is a, is a technology from the 60s. ACH is a technology from the 60s. It's all very, very uh, old systems that are not meant for the online world. So what Fuse is saying is, uh, is uh, not that we're going to offer a better, better business model, is that for once we were using blockchains for what they are, a way to lower cost. I can offer today a cheaper uh, uh, fee than Visa and, uh, and Stripe and Square uh, because uh, people don't take into account that because of their inefficiencies, you know, settlement takes a week or a couple of days. My settlement is immediate. So I can be faster and cheaper already today. You know, people saying blockchains are slow, but I can show how they already faster than Visa. So that's really where, where I see uh, this technology shines in, in lowering barriers, lowering costs, lowering the fees, not because we've managed to make money from Bitcoin. That's not the reason, but just because the, we're not charging for, uh, we're not managing risk and we're not charging for consumer protection and stuff like that. We're charging for how much data you're putting in the blockchain, how many bytes, kilobytes, uh, you're, you're putting into the blockchain. doesn't matter if it's a million dollars or one dollar. We're not managing uh, risks. We also don't offer any cash chargeback service. Crypto is one way. Yeah. It, it's like uh, sending an email. So naturally, those properties, you know, when you work with push instead of pull, when you don't offer consumer protection, you let other people offer consumer protection. When you're not, not managing risk, when there's no underwriting process, which is very expensive, uh, when it's not fragmented and you need to like manage, uh, uh, you know, um, if the user is, uh, is sending from this bank or that bank, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, you can really lower all the transaction costs because it's a, it's a radically more modern architecture. Agreed. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely, again, it's applying to such an old system that like it's, it's radically different. Very well said. Yeah. So I guess now just to kind of cap us off here for the next video, we'll do a deeper dive into Fuse itself, but just to turn the spotlight back on you for a second. Tell me about what being the CEO of Fuse looks like. Like, what do you handle on the day to day? So I think uh, um, I don't consider myself as a CEO because I also, you know, kind of trying to, to be leading a community and I think leadership has a lot to do with it it's not about like my biggest pain I'm a product guy so I like to handle the micro stuff I like to to be in the trenches and you know do daily meetings with the team and uh, you know hire devs and hire designers and and brainstorm with product people about you know how to improve the experience and how to create like a new uh, like a better way to access this technology this is I think the the, the biggest selling point for Fuse and, and I think pretty much every big uh, tech company, you know, how they manage to make the technology accessible, how they manage to make the technology transparent. And, and that's really how you get big. No, but not by building the fastest blockchain, right? That's not uh, uh, the objective. Um, the objective is to build, bring million, billion retail consumers. Uh, that, that's the, the, the wet dream, like that's the holy grail for the entire space. So we want to uh, focus on that. So that requires a lot of, you know, product work, in my opinion. Uh, but in parallel, it's also building the community, giving the vision. And uh, the first uh, three years of the company, when we started, it was really like a small team. We we're not doing any marketing. We didn't want to raise money in an ICO. Uh, we, we think that money is a lot of raising a lot of money makes you run slower. Like uh, uh, I can I can elaborate about it. Um, I believe me, I thought about it so much. But you actually move faster if you raise the million than if you raise twenty million. If you if you didn't find product market fit, if you found product market fit and you're already you know in the growth stage, yeah. by all means, pour all the money you want into that funnel. But if you're pouring money into a funnel that you think is a product market fit, but it's actually you know. There's a, leak, a leaking bucket, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then, then you're basically throwing money uh, and, and wasting it, you know, on, instead of, you know, doing a lot of more iterations, a lot more exploration, experimentation. There's things that, are, uh, that are, are, are working much better when you're trying to find the more product market fit. Mm -hmm. So that was like the first uh, three years. Uh, the recent six months, uh, you can basically say that everything's changed. Uh, because I can't no longer do any micro work. 
and the organization you know became very flat which is not something that i can manage a person can't manage more than you know <laughs> more than a dozen i would say like people under him mm -hmm. uh, and this is why we're starting you know to build the organization and hierarchy and uh, we were basically doubling the team size in the in the last quarter uh, so that's a very big uh, deal uh, but uh, you know one of the hardest things for for a ceo is to decide you know what you need to be hands-on and what not and like how to stop micromanaging stuff and naturally i'm i'm very involved uh, ceo but i'm trying to like do a more zoomed out uh, approach uh, and and really work on our middle management like fuse needs uh, fuse has like amazing people uh, uh, it lacks a uh, middle management you know and that's the key to to build an organization uh, give people responsibility give them a budget give them some rope you know, give them a, a goal to, to, to run towards. And uh, Fuse is uh, today an ecosystem of several companies. It's not one company. So there's already several thousand Fuse, several companies that, that participate, uh, at least uh, 50, 60 new investors to work with in the last year. So just a lot, of, a lot, more, um, a lot more people, you know, just yeah. jo joined our vision and, 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 and educating the, the public. Yeah, you know, that that is one of the most interesting things I've seen in, in the blockchain space in general is that the communities are rather tight, right? That they're rather adhesive. They stick together a lot and you can get a lot from your community and a lot of people want to join and help too. Yeah. So with on that note, where can people go to learn more? Where can people go to talk to the community? Where are you guys hosted on? So I have to say my, our community is, uh, is my biggest source of pride because we started really, uh, uh, you know, we didn't do any marketing, but, but the first day we started uh, the company, we started to onboard, you know, long-term partners. And a lot of them are still with us uh, to this day. Uh, people that, uh, you know, they don't, the, maybe they didn't put a lot of money or invest a lot of money in Fuse, but they gave us like much, something much more important. They gave us their time. They put their name on it. And today, actually, some of them raised money and, you know, they, they, they started whole businesses on it. So when you make, uh, you know, partners like this, uh, you know, you get, I always get uh, people saying like your community is amazing. And just, uh, you know, people just see it from the, one of the, the ways to, to, to understand it is, you know, you pick at it randomly any time of the day and you see like 400 new messages. You see the, the activity yeah. and the support. Uh, and you see we have fans and I think it's really about, you know, asking the people, is this the future you want? Uh, and they say they do. Do you think we can achieve this vision? Do you believe in this team? And they say we do, but they don't only say they actually like stay and they actually participate. And, and this is why also you see 50% of, uh, of uh, Fuse is locked. Uh, so there's like a lot of participation and, and people propose stuff. I recommend everybody to join uh, our Telegram group and uh, check out our website at fuse.io. Uh, join the, the Telegram group. There's several Telegram groups, but if you don't like Telegram announcements, you can just join to our announcement group. There's new things we share every day, like uh, this tool added fuse support, or we, we're in another you know, uh, staking operator. There's like another article about us, like really every day. So, uh, and also does the mailing list. So there's a lot of places where you can get the uh, info. Really looking forward for people to join the community. Perfect. Well, Mark, thank you so much for your time today. And you guys heard the man. Don't be afraid to join the Telegram. Check out the website on fuse.io. If you're like me, you'll join, you'll see the globe and you'll spin it around a couple of times. So that was the first mm -hmm. thing I did, but then check it out, everybody. And if you guys have any questions, don't be afraid to send them over. Stay tuned for another video coming soon. And Mark, do you have any closing words before we go? No, nope. looking forward for the next uh, uh, conversation. And in the meantime, check out uh, the website. And there's also a wallet. You can uh, deposit a uh, Fuse dollar and just see, you know, what, how we see the, the future of blockchains and interaction with blockchain payments looks like. Perfect. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching. Mark, thank you for your time today and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Mm -hmm.